Next, we're going to start exploring the Elastic Security app. From inside of Kibana, click on the hamburger menu and then go down to, uh, you can click anywhere in here of these subheadings, but you can just start with, we'll start with overview. This is giving us a basic overview of what is happening, uh, all the things that are being re re reported from a security context. This is your overview page. You scroll down, you can see how many events are being generated. We don't have any external alerts yet. External alerts would be something like Suricata or Zeek. Um, things that are being that are generating events that are outside of the Elastic stack, um, like as I mentioned, Zeek or Suricata. Also, other kind of endpoints that could be the endpoint collection. Uh, agents could be reporting it here. And then detection alerts will be if you have any actual events from that are triggered by the detection engine. Scrolling down, you can see some of your host information. Uh, in this example, in the last 15 minutes, I've collected 3,934 endpoint security events, um, 200 WinLog events, and 323 packet feed events. If you click on the carrot next to it, you can see a drop down, and it will break this down into uh, what type of information is being collected. As an example, 36 DNS entries, 2,643 registry events. Same thing for WinLogB and PacketBeat. And we'll break it down for the type of information. Over on the left-hand side is the security news, which can be helpful that as Elastic writes and delivers relevant security information, they can populate it inside of this field, inside of this frame for you to review and to kind of bring important things to mind. Uh, timelines, which we'll get into, you'll show you recent timelines, and then also recent cases uh, that you may do inside of the, um, the security app. We haven't got there yet, but moving on on the detections. This is where all of your detection alerts will be populated uh, once those actually start firing. From here, you can click on manage detection rules, and you can see all of the rules. I don't have any of them enabled yet, but you can simply just click a toggle and it will enable the rule and it will run on its next um, uh, polling interval. You can type inside of this little search bar, you can type anything that will allow you to do some filtering and searching. So as an example, a lot of these are AWS rules. So we can just type AWS right here and hit enter, and it will only show us rules that have the word AWS in them. And you can use anything that, any searching criteria right here. You can also use tags. So you can use uh, tags that are in the drop down that are, again, you can search for them, or we can just click on things that are part of the, as an example, the MITRE attack framework. So command and control, you can just click that on that tag and it will show you all the rules that have anything to do with MITRE's uh, command and control. You can further filter this down and say, I only want to see things that are windows. So now we're only showing things that are windows and also involved with command and control. And to remove those, you just click them again to uncheck them. There are currently 535 Elastic provided rules. Um, you can click that to only show the Elastic rules. Once we create your own rules, you can, they will be show up under custom rules and they'll be populated right here. Rule monitoring allows you to see uh, all the rules that are enabled, how well they're running, and if there's any errors with them, and also if they're how fast it takes them to run. And this is helpful if you're noticing a lot of slow down after you enable a whole bunch of rules, you may want to find out which one is causing uh, the, the most delay. And then the exception list it are for once you identify things in the detection rules that maybe you are, are normal traffic for your environment, you can go into the exception list uh, inside the detection engine and they will be added here as exceptions. Moving on to hosts, this shows all the host information about your uh, boxes. So it shows the host that we have checked in, um, we can show all the authentication information. So how many times it has have authentications happened under this uh, authentication subheading. There's been 27 successes in the last 15 minutes um, and it continues to, to run and update this information. Also uh, uncommon processes. So processes that it thinks are abnormal to be starting. So this is going to, this will be relevant as more and more services and your boxes run for longer and longer, it's going to learn a little more about what kind of processes that you're expecting. But right now it's probably firing about everything because all of it is new because we just installed the agent. Clicking on events, you can actually see the Windows events <clears throat> that are being generated inside of this row renderer. And this shows you all the events irrespective of whether or not they're malicious or not. Just all the events that it's recording. 
And you can click on this little carrot here and it will expand this out uh, over into this flyout to give you more additional information about it. And it's the same type of searching that you could do uh, for anything else. And then external alerts, again, we don't have any, but external alerts would be something like if you were running a Zeek agent or uh, Sericata or any other endpoint um, tool that could be reporting into the Elastic Stack will be uh, shown up in the uh, external alert section. Clicking on network, network will show you, it has this map over right here of all the network traffic that it's observing right now from all the different data sources. If you scroll down, you can see a little more detailed information about the different networking information. So DNS queries that are happening, flows, TLS handshakes and systems that are being reached out to, the source IPs that are communicating here, um, and then destination IPs on where all the network traffic is going. This is flow. Flow are things that generally don't fall into one of the other categories that it tracks. So for, so for DNS, HTTP, TLS type of things, flow is not really, don't think about it like quite like NetFlow, but it's similar in that fact. It shows you how much data is being transferred back and forth. DNS queries that are happening um, on the local box. All the HTTP traffic that's happening, probably is not any right now actually. TLS, it shows you all the TLS information that is happening on where things are going and who owns the certificates. And then again, external alerts, but we don't have any in our environment. Timelines, we explored timelines very briefly with um, going over the event query language. So it allows you to create correlations of things that are happening together and you can create timelines from inside the detection engine. You could create a new timeline and you can perform your normal KQL searches, or if you're going to use EQL, event query language, you can simply click on the correlation tab and write your EQL query right here. Cases are a simple way that you can track uh, events inside of the detection engine when they happen. You can think about them as just like you would normal, a normal case management system. Uh, this is really meant for very, very basic triaging of identifying uh, different events. If you want to, uh, Elastic and Kibana, you can make a connection into a third party um, case management system. However, that's a licensed feature, but it's not really needed for what we're gonna be doing. If you were gonna create a new case, you can just create a new case. New case, tag it however you want, write information in here, and then you can sync the information as, it, as new, new things are populated with this. You can attach timelines to it uh, through this little button right here. If you have a timeline of events, you can insert these timelines. And then if you had an external connector, which we don't, but you could send it in there. And finally, administration will allow us to look at the different endpoints that you have reporting in. So in our example, we have just the one endpoint that we have reporting in, what policy it's running, and basic status about it, its IP address, and that it's, it's healthy right now. The trusted applications would be if you are running something custom that you don't want the endpoint to scan or to mod modify or could potentially think it's malicious, you can add that in advance here as a trusted application based on a file hash or path. Simply click that, trusted application, uh, what operating system and the file hash, and then you would populate the value. And then you could also um, build things together that it has this and this and this. Path, uh, you know, who the, the code signer is or the path of where it's located. And you can stitch all these together to have one trusted application.